This video is about the fader and vpot functions in the new generic MIDI button in plugin version 3.11. So let's start with the fader function, which by far is the most complex thing in this update. For the graphic design, it uses a design system similar to that for dials. And if you have created custom designs for the control change button or for dials, you need to repackage them a bit to be used by the generic MIDI button. If I connect this button to channel 2, CC1, uh, it is connected to the first channel in Cubase. As for the control change action, you have a slider for the fader speed, how fast the fader should move when you press the button. There is also a new feature where you can control the speed using a script variable. Even though this button in itself isn't controlled by scripts, you can use a script button to, for instance, toggle between two speed values stored in a script variable. And you can reference the name of this script variable. If that script variable exists and have a value other than zero, it will be used for the fader speed. If the variable doesn't exist, or if the value is zero, it will use the fader speed from the slider in the editor. As for the control change button, you can decide if you want to have some information displayed along with the faders. I can, for instance, display the decibel value from Cubase. So when I change the fader, I get the decibel value in the information field. As for dials, you can select to have a view meter displayed on the button. So if I connect this to channel 10, CC1, and play in Cubase, I will have a view meter displayed on the button. As you can see, the view scale on the button is nowhere near the same level as in Cubase, and th that's because for some mysterious reason, Steinberg has decided to not send the VU level in a linear scale. Instead, they are using an exponential scale, so it's very hard to get the same view on the button. This is what the VU scale dropdown is for. I've created a scale for Cubase that recalculates that exponential scale to a linear scale, so the display on the button is much more like the display in the mixer in Cubase. There is also an option to display a state icon on the button. So if I connect the state icon to channel 2, CC2, which is the mute state for the first track, I can have an on icon like this, and an off icon, like that. And then I will have the icon available on the button. And if I change the mute state in Cubase, you see that the state is changed on the icon. You can change the position wherever you want the icon, and the size of the icon. And you can do like this to only show the icon when it is on. So when I mute the channel, the icon is visible, and when it's not muted, it's hidden. You can also go wild and have the icon cover the complete button. So when it's muted, you only have a mute icon displayed. There are also some visual tweaks you can do. You can colorize the handle if you want it to have some other color than what is decided by the design. You can show a handle shadow, making the design a bit more 3D. And you can colorize the information area to whatever color you like. 
The default direction for a fader is to be vertical, but if you want a horizontal fader, you can select this radio button and you will have a horizontal fader. The auto setting is also used when you have two buttons. So let's make a copy of this button and paste it alongside it and it will automatically match those two buttons as a pair controlling the same thing. You will notice that some of the labels are slightly green and those properties are automatically synced between these two buttons. So if I change for instance the speed on the lower button it will be changed on the upper and if I change the design it will be changed for both buttons. So they are linked and synced. As long as they are placed side by side, they are synced. So I can move these buttons however I like, and they will still be synced together. The fader direction selections, when it sets to auto, the lower button will move the fader down and the upper button will move the fader up regardless of uh, how they are placed that's the way it is so i can press the lower button to make the fader down and the upper button to move the fader up and that still applies no matter how i move the buttons if I were to change one of the buttons, so it is controlling something else, the connection is broken, since they are no longer controlling the same thing. So, let's move to the VPOT. It's much like the same thing as the fader. You have the same design system to display VPOT designs. So if I connect it to CC2 on channel 1, it should be connected to the panning of that channel. I should change the display to at current value instead. And as with the fader, if you have two buttons side by side, they will automatically link and sync settings. So so the upper button will move the pan up and the lower button will move it down. And as with the faders, if you change one of the synced properties, it will automatically sync to the other button. If you have a single button, if we delete that companion button and set the rotation direction to both ways, there are some new options here that were not available for the control change action. The control change action, when you have the both ways option selected, it would always move the VPOT, even though if it would be a direction switch. You can now stop that so you don't move before that time has passed and you don't move after a double press. So if I double press this button, the direction will switch. We don't see it because we don't have any indications, but if, if I add indications, we see that the direction switch, but nothing is sent. It's only a direction switch that is made. Then I need to press it again to actually perform uh, some change that are sent to the door. You can also have the option to automatically change direction at end positions. So if I press this to the end, it will automatically change direction. It won't start to move in the other direction, but it will change. So the next time you press the button, it will move in that direction. And finally, the scrub wheel is very much like the V-Pot, but you have different controls for clockwise and counterclockwise movement, and you don't have this automatically change direction at end point available, because there are no end points for scrub wheel. That's all for this video. 
Check out the video for scripting as well. Thanks for watching.